Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ebrahim Parati. I'm a PhD student in University West uh, from Sweden. Uh, today, I'm going to present my paper entitled Effective High Frequency Mechanical Impact Treatment Procedure on Wet Tone Geometry and Fatigue Properties of High Strength Steel Weights. Through my presentation, I will first have a short introduction on fatigue welded component and HFMI treatment. Then I will have experimental results, discussion, and conclusions. Welded connections are always the prime location for fatigue failure. Why? Because of the three main reasons. The first is always we have welding defects. Second, we have geometrical changes because of the weld profile that this induces a high stress concentration factor and consequently decreases the fatigue strength. And the third reason is that we have tensile residual stresses because of welding. <coughs> Therefore, we need some fatigue life improvement methods in order to increase the fatigue life of welded components. One of the main group of methods is via weld to geometry modification methods. And we have also residual stress modification methods to increase the fatigue life. Veto geometry modification methods can be categorized into grinding and remelting methods. For example, we have bare grinding or we have thick dressing from the remelting methods. From residual stress modification, it can be done via mechanical methods, stress relief method, and the recent method that is used of LTT filler materials. Mechanical methods is uh, like pinning method, we have hammer pinning or needle pinning. And the topic of my today discussion is high frequency mechanical impact treatment. What is high frequency mechanical impact treatment? HFMI makes use of cylindrical indentors that are accelerated against the component surface. You see a picture of that here. They are accelerated against the in this case the well toe with using the high frequencies. This method increases the fatigue life via three main effects. Our geometry modification, residual stress in a way that produces progressive <coughs> residual stresses and also increasing the surface hardness. The main part of my uh, presentation today is related to geometrical modification via this method. If we have a closer look under a stereo microscope at the treated area, you see a somewhat uniform and smooth treated region along the well toe line here after application of high frequency. We have uh, main geometrical features after <coughs> treatment that are W that is width of treated region, DB is depth of treated region in the base metal, DW is depth of treated region in the weld, and also radius that can be fitted after high frequency treatment. In this paper, we have used base metal Veldux 1300 that has almost 1300 megapascal lead strength and filler material, we use core weld 89 to produce welding at T-joint welds by this dimension and this sequence using gas metal arc weld. High frequency mechanical impact treatment was done in France by Sonots with a frequency of 20 kHz and radio indentors we used for the upper belt toes that are this U1 and U2, 3 mm and for L1 and L2 that are lower belt toe, 1.5 mm. In the first part of 
this paper, we have studied the effect of number of treatment runs on geometry. So one well toe in the lower well toe was treated using three run treatment, and the, in the other side using six run treatment. And after that, we use a GOM scanner to capture the geometrical feature of the weld after three and six run and compare the uh, geometry after these uh, two treatments. Here you see the result uh, comparing one surface profile, six after six run and three runs. And you see the, you can notice the material transfer by the dash arrow that happened from the wet to the base metal. As it is visible by looking at, at this picture, no significant change of geometry happened by increasing the number of passes from three to six run. Just an, a slight increase in the depth of treatment in the weld area and a somewhat uh, a small decrease in depth of treatment in the base metal was happening. Otherwise, the width of treatment and radius that can be fitted in this area is almost the same for two different treatment runs. So it can be suggested that three run treatment would be a more economical option than six run treatment. And the reason for this uh, material movement from the wet to the base metal is related to the higher hardness in the HAZ area than the wet area. You can see here the hardness, micro hardness map in as welded and after high frequency mechanical impact treated. After treatment, we almost, we always have the uh, increase in hardness in the treated region, but in the HAZ, we have harder, it is harder than the weld metal. So after treatment, by increasing the number of treatment from three to six, here is softer than why we think we have material transfer to this part. Fatigue testing was done under constant amplitude fully reverse bending load with a frequency of 3 to 7 Hz. Here you see the picture of fatigue loading for the T-joint sample. Evaluation was done using uh, effective notch stress method based on IIW International Institute of Welding recommendations. And here you see an example of uh, welded component after fracture, that fracture occurred from the treated region. Here you see the fatigue testing result comparing the as welded and high frequency mechanical impact treated samples and also comparing them with FAT 225 that is recommended for I, uh, by IIW for as welded component. If we have a look at 2 million cycle you see a small increase in fatigue strengths if we compare that uh, characteristic value and somewhat bigger increase by high frequency when we compare the mean values. So we had about 26% increase in mean fatigue strengths when performing high frequency mechanical impact treatment. But the slope of the curves are close to three. Geometrical measurement that we use the GOM scanner. If we put two surfaces before and after treatment on top of each other, and we have 3D measurement of them, we notice material transfer because of the treatment from the base metal to the weld region for both lower weld toe and upper weld toes. If we, for example, look at one surface profile for as welded and after treatment, you see the difference is not 
very significant. If you see it here, that is the approximate position of fusion boundary. Here is the base and here is the wet. We have a width of treatment of 2.5 millimeter and depth of treatment in the base about 0.19 millimeter. And almost we didn't have any depth of treatment in the wet. We also uh, investigated and measured the residual stresses in front of the well toe in three different locations of 0.5 and also two measurements uh, on top of the weld. Here you see one example of the residual stress measurement results for longitudinal residual stresses that we had about uh, more than 800 megapascal compressive residual stresses very close to the well toe. For high frequency mechanical impact treatment compared to as well the samples. In conclusion, we studied the influence of high frequency mechanical impact treatment on Velto geometry and fatigue strengths in 1300 megapascal with the strength steel. When we increase the number of treatment runs from 3 to 6, well toe radius and bits of treatment remain almost constant, but we had uh, a decrease in depth of treatment in the base metal and we had an increase in the depth of treatment in the weld metal. A higher hit? <laughs> Therefore, uh, three run treatment seems to be more economical option than six run treatment. I also try to down, uh, do a uh, effect of lip. In, in case of uh, the laminate, the lip is quite small. Maybe we can find a solution. <laughs> but I just be finishing for so just a second. Continue, please. As high frequency mechanical impact increased well toe radius slightly but resulted in more uniform geometry along the treated well and as well that sample showed a high mean fatigue strength of 353 megapascal and high frequency increased the mean fatigue strength by 26%. Depth of indentation in the base metal uh, 0.15 to 0.19 was measured and a bit saw indentation in the range of 2.5 to 3 millimeter uh, were produced. Uh, this project was funded by Swedish Energy Agency, Volvo Truck and ESOP partner and uh, I want to thank uh, Sonat for doing the uh, high frequency mechanical impact treatment. Thank you.